Well, let's get, get your tissues, ladies, because here we go. So similar to you, um, I had my writer die, right? Uh, prior to, to the loss, um, you know, this was the person. And then I was fortunate enough where I've been blessed with good people in my life overall, right? You know, mm -hmm. still, still good friends with people from high school. This is where I say the positives of social media and Facebook like that, where you're able to keep connected. And just my hood in general, no matter how many years have gone by, there's always just love amongst us, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I had a team, like I had a really, really good team. So I had my writer die with his, which is also my cousin, as you mentioned yours. And then aside from that, we had our little entourage of about maybe six or seven additional best girlfriends, which are very hard to find in that quantity, right? Like oh, God, solid yeah. friends. And it all started because uh, I was teaching in Jersey and then we were just all teachers and then we all just became best friends. And I'm talking about maybe we're going on 20 plus years. So this is 20 plus years of friendships to the point that, you know, just like in the movies where it's the group of girls and then their husbands or boyfriends, then they've all become friends. We take turns in each other's houses, doing the barbecues yeah. and the events and things like that. I'm talking about we're unbreakable. Anywhere we walk into, we're about 25 deep, right? You can't mess with us, right? So everything's all good. And then 2018 comes, um, you know, I had, I had been living my best life going, oops, sorry about that, lost camera, living my best life going on cruises and vacations. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. I lost my camera, one sec. Let's do this. All right, let's do this one. Going on vacations, going on cruises, and, you know, just living my best life, basically, right? And um, I turn out to be pregnant in 2017 on a cruise, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you know, I'm in, I'm in my late thirties at that time. Did I think I wanted to have a child? Not necessarily. Cause once again, I was living my best life. I've also been in education for a very long time, over 25 years. So wow. I was one of those where I was getting my fill of being around children. Okay, right. So I was okay. If I didn't become a mom, like I said, 25 years in, you know, I kind of knew the game of, of rearing children, raising children, educating children. I was content with that you know the universe god anyone you believe in had other plans so i said okay let's do this you know my inner circle mm -hmm. of friends they were all becoming mothers already had been mothers so that was fine with me so then um i give birth to this beautiful beautiful baby you know what i'm saying of course you always wish for that health and you know you always wish for for you know the healthier child the 10 fingers 10 toes which all down the line but at the, at the end of the day you know i wanted my baby to have good hair you know what i'm saying you always want your baby. <laughs> i wanted my baby to have good hair so, you know, I got 4C. I love my 4C, but, you know, I just wanted my baby not to have to go through that. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, I ended up dating a, a, you know, Puerto Rican nationality. So I was hoping that it was his good hair. Here we go. October 1st, 2017. I birthed this beauty. I'm talking about everybody loves their children. Everybody calls their children beautiful. But my baby was a dime. My baby was beautiful. <laughs> the good hair, the nice, strong African nose. She was beautiful. Right. So here I am um, enjoying the, the spoils of motherhood, but also with a certain cockiness. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm a teacher. I've been doing this 25 years. My kid's going to be perfect. She's going to grow up to be the best. The, you know, anything I could do for her, I will do because I have that knowledge and that education in the background. So in the very beginning, when I gave birth to her, I actually immediately went back to work. You know, we can go into a whole Girl. other topic next time as in terms <laughs> of our healthcare system, you know, which forces a lot of moms not to have that full maternity leave oh, and forces okay. us to have to kind of go. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've been pretty healthy my whole entire life. So I had a really good bounce back. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was working for a private family as a nanny, you know, they needed me back. I went ahead once again. Hey, I got the next at least 18 years right before baby girl mm -hmm. leaves the house. So I'm good. Um, this is now October. We go into February of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, the beginning of that, I find out that I'm pregnant again because we all know mm -hmm. how that works, right? They tell you to right. relax a little bit, but nobody relaxed. And it turned out I had actually gotten pregnant with triplets um, for a couple of, yeah, for a couple of people that insemination period right after your birth is higher, your hormones are still mm -hmm. on high alert. So you're able to actually have doubles or more um, during that time set. So of course, here we go. Um, so I'm excited. Once again, there's a piece of cake. I got this fast forward into February and I get woken up by my ex at that time. And he says, our child is not breathing. So, you know, I run into the room. Mind you, I'm just freshly woken up. Also, to backtrack a little bit, when I do get pregnant, I get extremely sick. Extremely, extremely sick. You hear about the morning sickness, but I'm talking about I'm the queen of morning sickness, right? Wow. So 
I get woken up to this. Mind you, it's just a regular Tuesday, right? I'm not thinking anything of it, getting ready to, you know, get up eventually within that hour to get ready to go to work. And there's my child lifeless in her changing table. Uh, fast forward now all the way to March, you know, not into get into too much detail because it's something still active. Uh, come to find out my husband was the cause of the injuries to my child. Um, and I, you know, ex, sorry, uh, ex-husband was a cause to the injuries to my child. Fast forward a little bit more, it all ended up causing her death, right? So the same way you're frozen in shock, the, my, the gang was frozen in shock, the whole entire hood was frozen in shock, right? Um, you know, with me being a nanny from my area for so many years, all my kids are grown that I've raised there. Um, you know, I have relationships with these families, right? So they've all known me. So it was always a longstanding joke of, ooh, I can't wait for, you know, Jen to have a baby. It's going to be her turn soon. So this whole network of people, this whole village was waiting for this to happen. So come to find out, um, like I said, I can't get into too much detail because it's a little bit more active. Um, it, you know, it is a court case now, things like that. So while we're doing this, I'm still in shock, right? Because once mm -hmm. again, this is not what I expected. You know, I find I found out through means um, of what was done exactly to her. And it was disgusting and it was brutal. Um, a lot of it is access online. So that's why I know I could speak on some of it. It's something you could easily Google. Like my life was private on a Monday. And then by Tuesday, I was public. I was on the mm -hmm. internet. I was in the news. It was the just internet, a whirlwind. That's why it, it was a whirlwind of emotions. And I'm a very private person. So mm -hmm. to have that all happen was just overwhelming. Um, in the very beginning, the group was there. Families were there. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to say. So their job was one thing, be my support, right? So that happens. Um, you know, we have a, a going home ceremony for her, things like that. Once again, it's still an active investigation. So there was a lot of things in between. Um, you know, it could be another topic one day, but there's a lot of things that our healthcare system and our judicial system needs to work on. But we can touch mm -hmm. base on that another time. Um, in the very beginning, I didn't know what to do. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. like, well, stay here or stay with me. You know, you have these three that are coming. Um, in between that time, because of what was happening to my daughter, I was actually expelling the other three, meaning I was losing a lot of blood and I was pretty much mm -hmm. miscarrying them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so at the at, at, during that point, I can honestly tell you, I wasn't even worried about those three. I wanted my main, my best friend. Right. That's who I was worried about. Right. I didn't know these three. I wanted my best friend. You know, people were like, relax, try to relax. Can't relax in a time like that. No. So. Um, in between that time, I had vacation several times to a Caribbean country. And in, in those findings and in those vacations, I was like, all right, this place is doable to one day, you know, move as a family. This was prior to, you know, me getting pregnant with her. And, you know, this was a decision that we had made when we were a couple that this is a country we would consider moving to. We get pregnant with her. We rediscussed it, that it would be something we would move to in the future with her. So, of course, when this took place, I immediately thought, I got to go. Right. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, you know, it was it was hard on them because they were like, wait, where are you going? We're right here. We're your mm -hmm. village. We're your support system. Where are you going? And the thing was, it was my personal decision because, number one, I couldn't breathe. Mm. I was suffocating, you know, born and raised in my my hometown, homeland. And I couldn't bear being there, the anxiety that it gave me just to be right. in that area. Um, one of the reasons why is that in that very beginning, nothing happened in the process when it came to trials or even arresting him. Mm -hmm. So for a little while, not even for a little while, for a good couple of years, three years to be exact, this person was free. Now, I was told this would happen before we would go to court. So that's why I made my personal decision not to be around for that. I did not want to take the risk of bumping into this evil person in a Walmart, getting gas, you know, because as a motherly instinct, as any person would tell you, I'll kill for mine. Yeah. And I was ready to do that. I was ready to do that. Obviously, I didn't or we wouldn't be sitting here today. But it was because after all I've told you right now, it was because of that decision of not doing what I guess any other mother or any other father would have done. Mm -hmm. I got people that turned their back on me. They're like, well, the gen I know would have put that dude six feet under. Well, guess what, guys? The gen I know would have done it too. But under this circumstance, this one broke gen. 
this broke yeah, gem. You're human. You're a woman. Like those are like those are like your kids. Like exactly. So it's just where I needed to go. I needed to regroup. I needed to find out what the definition of my life is now. Um, right. You know, we all have that path where you know there's a timeline. You know, we're children, teenagers, adults, jobs, hopefully marriage, and then children. When that cycle is broken. Mm-hmm. then you're just standing there and it's like, all right, now what's next? Next. Mm-hmm. Like, what is the point of me kind of, you know, and I didn't, I didn't uh, fathom suicide, but I definitely now could relate to some that did because it's like, mm-hmm. all right, what do I do now? What's the purpose of my life now? You know? So before those, before those thoughts overwhelm me, which they still do every single day, not this necessarily the suicide part, but the what do I do now? I needed to answer those questions on my own. There was nothing that my village could have done for me to help me find that. But the what? thing was where where they turned their back on me was because I guess I didn't handle it the way they wanted to. And I don't you know, this is something that's going to be on the Internet and I don't want to speak for anyone. I don't know at the end of the day, but it's the fact that so many have shut me out that I don't know the real reason why they turn their back. You know, I really don't know. I want to say, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, well, you know, my ride or die that I mentioned or my other sisters, as I I considered them mentioned, they were that hurt. You know, this was their child too. They are, they are also mothers. So they understand that pain. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is what blew my mind is at the end of the day, your only job was to just be there for me. No matter right. what decision I would have made. Some so people don't understand that. And I, well, I just don't understand why, you know, my cousin that I'm speaking of didn't understand that either. Don't get me wrong. She was my child's godmother. So it broke her heart more than anybody else. I get it. But dang, sis, I miss you. Dang, yeah. sis, I needed somebody to talk to this whole entire or a shoulder time. to cry on. Mm-hmm. You know, and I needed somebody who understood me, knew me, and, and you know, could have, uh, spoke you know talk to me talk me off that ledge sometimes and it, the irony is i received that part from strangers and acquaintances i've met more now than i've done from her mm-hmm. and it's like dang sis we had a plan yeah a bond a plan we we had a plan like i'm your your child's godmother you're my child's godmother this was supposed to be a thing this was a horrible horrible thing that happened to me but I still needed you there. It wasn't, that wasn't the time for you to leave. That wasn't the time for you to feed your own ego or your own um, resolutions or issues about that or the shoulda, woulda, coulda, because that's my shoulda, woulda, coulda, not yours. Right. Your only job was to have my back and be there for me. Um, as time has gone by, it's eased the pain of, because now it's more than one loss to me, right? It's not just my yeah. daughter. It's it's all these people. Um, so it's eased. It's, it's eased a little bit in that sort of loss, but there are times where, you know, something happens to me. I just want to talk to her. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, instead of, I talk to my daughter, I always talk to my daughter, you know? Um, but there's times I want to talk to her, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I can't, you know, can I reach out? I've tried, I tried in the very beginning. I tried to ask her what it is specifically. And, you know, the little feedback I did receive in the beginning was where she just didn't understand my decisions I made. But I told her it wasn't for you to understand. It was just for you to be there overall. Um, Is it something where I think we'll make amends? I'm not sure. But I'll tell you one thing. As these years continue to go by, I'm missing that less and less, Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, this sort of grief on this level, it, of course, obviously it changes you. Um, You know, you have certain people that lose their child and they end up going into a depression, things like that. I'm definitely in a depression. But because I know I have this grand angel, this grand being watching me, I mm-hmm. can't, I don't, I want to be everything I would have been if she was still present physically. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I can't be that one that wallows in my sorrows in the corner. I have to keep going. But now my drive is different because everything I do, every step I take is for, is for her. her. 